It's nice to see everyone here today, and happy Sabbath, everyone. <laughs> Haven't been here some time here, and um, I think we all had um, a little bit of sickness here now, so hopefully you're all going to be over this now. <laughs> How many of you have ever flown on a commercial aircraft? I'm sure most of us have flown on a commercial aircraft, and we always hear the pilot saying once he gets up to cruising altitude that we are now cruising at about 30,000 feet, maybe 35,000 feet if we're really going far. But most of the time when you fly in a commercial aircraft, you're flying around 30,000 feet or higher. Now when you're in the sky at 30,000 feet or higher, what can you see assuming down there it's all clear, there's no clouds? Well, you probably will see if you're over the ocean, you'll probably see the, the ocean. You may see little cigars down there that are small ships. You may see bigger objects below in the ocean, like, a big, like an island, maybe with some mountains on the island. If you're flying over land at that height, you may be seeing bigger objects down there, like trees, buildings, homes, rivers, or vehicles. But since you're so high up, you can't see the details of what's actually down there, but you can probably get the general idea if it's a good area or a bad area. You can get the general idea there's people living down there, or if you're flying over a desert and there's no one down there. But you probably get the idea of what I'm trying to say. Now there is a metaphor in the world unknown as about the 30,000 feet view. And basically what this means is that Look at your life from 30,000 feet above, or look at your business from 30,000 feet. What's the general overview you see of your life or business? Did you ever think about how, if you were to look down on your life from 30,000 feet from the air, what would you see in yourself? What does God see in you? Try closing your eyes and imagine that you're flying high above the earth, and you're looking down on your life. What do you see? Are you happy with what you see? Are there things you would want, you don't like to see, and you need to change? Well, I thought it'd be fun today to look at ourselves from 30,000 feet high. So let's go for a ride with me up there in the altitudes. Paul wrote about by looking at ourselves. Let's turn with me to Galatians chapter 6 and verses 3 and 4. Galatians chapter 6 and verses 3 and 4. And Paul writes, For if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself, but let each one examine his own work, and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. So Paul is basically telling us Christians that we have to take a look at ourselves. Examine ourselves. Don't think that you're something special or you're perfect when you're not, because we have to examine ourselves. And we usually examine ourselves a lot right before the Passover season and during the Passover season. Now, Paul, back in his day when his name was Saul, thought he was a very good man at that one point in his life. He thought he was very perfect and zealous for God's law. He thought he knew everything there was to know about God and everything he did was right. He writes about this in Galatians chapter 1 and verses 13 and 14. We'll just turn a few chapters over. Galatians chapter 1 and verse 13 and 14, where Paul writes, For you have heard of my former conduct in Judaism, how I persecuted the church of God beyond measure and tried to destroy it. And I advanced in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous for the traditions of my father. So Paul is writing to the church in Galatia about his life back before he got converted. He thought that he was the man in Judaism. He thought he knew everything. He is talking, he, he thought he was so great that he can do no wrong until God struck him blind and called him out. Paul had studied under Gamaliel, who was considered the great teacher of the law of Moses back then. And he thought these new Christians were perverting God's truth because they did not believe in the same things that he learned in Judaism. He was so zealous for God's law that he persecuted the Christians because he thought he was right. He had them thrown in prison. 
He even consented to the stoning of Stephen. At the time when Christ finally struck him blind, he was actually on his way to Damascus with letters from the high priest authorizing him to arrest Christians and bring them back to Jerusalem for more persecution. But as you know, God had other plans for Paul. The Apostle Paul later looked at himself from the 30,000 foot viewpoint and realized back then he was not that good. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 9, this is what he wrote about what he thought about himself back then. He wrote, For I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. So he realized later on in life that when he looked at himself from above, 30,000 feet, that he was not that great of a man. But by this time, Paul had repented. And he became very good at examining himself at 30,000 feet above. And he did reflect in his past life, and he wanted to become more perfect like Christ. And God helped him change his ways. <clears throat> in Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 through 14, Paul explains in detail on what he learned when he looked at himself. And I'm going to read this from the New Century Version. Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 through 14. And Paul writes, But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ, and be found in him, and not having my own righteousness which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection of the dead. That's through verse 11. So basically what Paul is writing here is that everything he had been believed in in the past and that he had counted as gain back then is now rubbish. He did not consider that to be worth anything in his current life because he wanted to gain Christ and be found to be with Christ. He wanted to become... Uh, perfect like Christ. And then verses 12 to 14, continuing to read here, Paul writes, Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And these scriptures here that Paul is writing is saying that, again, he's forgetting his past. He doesn't want to go back and remember that. But he's going to look forward now and look at his life from his 30,000 viewpoint and just press forward to reach the prize, to be in the God's kingdom. And that is what he wants to do. So he's continually trying to become perfect like Christ, and he's writing this for us so we too understand that we too need to continue working toward our goal to be perfect like Christ and make it into his kingdom. And Paul realized he still had a lot of work to do, and he wasn't planning on giving up, and he will continue working toward it. Now, we looked at a New Testament example. Let's go way back in the Old Testament and look at someone here. Let's look at someone who did something He thought he would not be caught, got caught, and then he realized he had to take a deep look at himself and examine himself and realize he had to ask God for repentance and work toward perfection. His name is David. So I'm not going to read the story about this instance of David. I'll just give a synopsis here. But when David became king, he was walking on the rooftop of his palace, and he saw Bathsheba bathing. David saw her. He sent a messenger to get her. And then David and her committed adultery. Bathsheba got pregnant, and David decided to call her husband, Uriah, back from the war. And he wanted him to be with Bathsheba. So it's like Bathsheba's um, baby's father was Uriah. But Uriah refused to be with Bathsheba because he wanted to be with David um, instead since um, he, his other men were fighting the war. So he thought it wouldn't be right to be with his wife. So David sent Uriah off to battle in an intense area of battle where he was killed, and David knew he would be killed. David clearly was not looking at himself at this point in time from 30,000 feet high. David didn't see anything what he was doing was wrong. 
Eventually, God sent Nathan the prophet to let David know what happened so he can examine himself. And so Nathan told David a parable, and he told him about how this rich man took a poor man's one little ewe lamb and killed it and gave it to this traveler for food. Well, when this parable was written, David became very angry. And he told Nathan that he doesn't like that rich guy, what he did. And then Nathan told David, you are that man. And then David realized what a horrible man he, he, he was what, and what he did. Well, David eventually repented. Um, he realized that he couldn't hide. And he, he had to take a realistic look at himself. So David wrote Psalms chapter 51 as an example of how to repent after you've examined yourself. And it's about how he repented after what he did with Bathsheba. Uh, we'll read a little bit here in Psalms 51, just verses 10 and 11. So we'll go there, Psalms 51 and verses 10 and 11. And uh, David wrote, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. David is basically asking God to make his spirit right again in him. He's begging God to not take his Holy Spirit away from him. And he's basically saying, like, God, I screwed up, and I know I don't deserve this, but please don't leave the Holy, don't take the Holy Spirit away from me. And this is a model for us, that when we take a look at ourselves from 30,000 feet, we should get down on our knees and ask God to make us right and to please help us keep his Holy Spirit in us. Make our heart pure again. We realize that we are weak. So today, we looked at two examples in the Bible about people who had to take a look at themselves from 30,000 feet. We looked at Paul in the New Testament and David in the Old Testament. We learned that when we take a look at ourselves from this 30,000 viewpoint, it forces us to use our imagination to go up in the sky and look down and see what we are doing with God's help. We will see things that we may not like about ourselves, but instead of letting things be, we need to change ourselves to become more like Christ, as Christ said, to become perfect as our Father is in heaven. We need to continue to become more perfect like Christ, repent of the things that we see that we are doing and wrong in our lives, and we need to repent. So, how does your life look from 30,000 feet above?